Okay, welcome everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you're joining us from today. Welcome to today's edition of Emigrate Open Day. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I see many of us in the room already, and I see a lot of us trying to get in into the room as well. Welcome to today's edition of Emigrate Open Day. Uh, I'm sure our guest is also in the room already. I'll be making our co-host um, now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, just to make sure you can hear me, can you pop in the chat that you can hear me and that you can see my screen? Now, I appreciate that. Just want to make sure I'm not speaking to myself. Welcome. Thank you, I'm seeing that message. Thank you, I see your message. Welcome to today's edition of Emigrate's Open Day. And Emigrate is, well, spelled Emigrate as well, is Tech Enabled Pathway to Relocation and Settlement. Thank you for joining us uh, tonight. Tonight we'll be having a guest uh, that will be sharing about our journey, about our experience uh, by the name of P. Sitimi. I believe that you would really be inspired and you get a lot of information out of her. I would encourage us to please note down our question, pop it in the chat so that we can ask as many questions as possible within the one hour of this session. I would also mention that we've had several editions of Emigrate Open Days in the past where we brought different people who are globally attractive, who different countries in the world have adjusted them as globally attractive. And I'll ask that you can take a look at some of those uh, videos. They are available to you. And so you can take a look at Okoyemi, who was talking about the US, about the uh, US uh, visas, O1 specifically. Uh, Babatunde Obasola talking about the technician visa. Uh, Molushola Amushon talking about North America generally. And he spoke about the Canada startup visa. He spoke about a few other visas that you may qualify for from the in the US. Uh, somebody, Shino by name, spoke about the graduate assistant track. Um, in the US as well. And there have been several of these open days that we've done so far. Videos are available. The information is also available to you for you to take a look at, for you to ensure that you have the best, in, the best uh, you make the best plan basically for your career based on all the information available to you. It's one thing for you to not even know these opportunities exist. There's another thing for you not to prepare, be prepared for them. Uh, not to take action based on some of the information that you've gotten from these sessions. Uh, I would also mention that we just finished with the Olympics. Some of us were watching the Olympics, but did you know that Japan had the highly skilled professional visa and a lot of IT people fall into that category as well? Emigrate, as I mentioned, is the tech-enabled pathway to relocation and settlement. Welcome, Peace. I see you already, and I'll be yielding the floor to you shortly. Uh, what is Emigrate? What we do at Emigrate is very simple. We help people become globally attractive. That's pretty much what we do. And there are two ways to become globally attractive in the, in the context of Emigrate. One of them is if you have a tech profile, and so you building a globally attractive tech profile, or alternatively, building a globally, tech, globally attractive tech-enabled business. So that like startups and... and, and um, Things, uh, like startups or tech enabled companies and so on. Um, on this. Yeah, like that. Sorry, I just made sure people would not be able to unmute themselves. Sorry for that interruption. Yes, so as I was saying, um, there are two ways. Either you have a tech enabled profile or you have an, a tech enabled business. But we know, yes, many of us, we came to this uh, session today just to find out about the different visas available and all of that. But we are saying to you, one of our message at Emigrate is that the visas at themselves, they are a side effect of something else. They are a side effect of the fact that these countries of the world are looking for people that will build their economy. 
they are looking for globally attractive people. And those globally attractive people will bring innovation into their economy. They will bring their skills into their economy. They will build businesses into, in their economy. They will create employment, they will create jobs and so on and so forth. So it's not because they are doing you a favor per se. It's really about the fact that, oh, they realize that, oh, you are a talent. And because you are a talent, you can bring that your talent to their economy to build their economy. At Emigrate, we do several things and we do a lot of things for free. My team members abuse me that I talk a lot about our free stuff and not enough about the premium stuff. But I'll talk about both of them. The free things we do at Emigrate, it starts with information and inspiration because we realize that many people do not even know about some of these opportunities that are available. We are also building the Emigrate community of like-minded people who are interested in these tech-enabled visas. We've all, we also have the monthly open Currently, we do it twice a month, and, um, and currently it's also free to members of the emigrate community. In the future, it will be paid because we believe we should actually be giving some sort of honorarium to some of the guests, uh, um, all of the guests really that have come onto these um, sessions. We have a bunch of introductory videos that are available free of charge as well. And from time to time, we do what we call the emigrate open consultation session. Um, it's a public consultation session, but what that does is if you have a specific question, you can actually come on stage and you can ask that question Question, and we would answer those questions typically in a way that it would benefit other people that are probably watching um, the video in the future. We also do short inquiry session. The only thing is that we are only able to accommodate one short inquiry session per person at the moment. It's usually about 10 minutes. Something I say to people is that before you come to that session, please ensure that you've consumed all the information possible. Don't come to that session asking things that you could have simply searched online on Google and so on. Don't come to that session asking things you could have asked at the Emigrate Open Day. Come to that session, haven't done your research. And when you ask, if you are stuck on one thing or the other, then you can come ask those kinds of questions. And one of our consultants will be available to answer those questions. Um, on the premium side, we have the Emigrate Circle, which is a premium community. It's a paid community. And this is, I mean, much more serious minded people and people that are already on the pathway along some of these things we are talking about. We also have the personalized consultation session. It's usually 30 minutes to one hour session, where if you have specific questions, for example, you're trying to submit your application and you need someone to review it, or, or you want to have some sort of roadmap and several other things like that, you can use this session. We have the standard package, which consists of a bunch of personalized consultation sessions. And the, my favorite really is the Emigrate Premium Service. And it's a one to two year program. Um, it consists of information, coaching, and several other things along that line. What it tries to do is to unload you from whatever point you are today to a point where you will qualify for some of these things that we are talking about, depending on where you are at every point in time. Um, yes, if you're interested in any of those, you can go to the URLs on the screen and you can get more information about those services. Some of the things that our services will cover will be things like general inquiry, will be things like coaching, will be things like if you need some sort of assessment to say, do I even qualify as at this point, should I go and apply? Um, if I need some sort of roadmap to say, oh, I want to apply in the future, what are the things I need to start doing today so that I can apply later on in the future? And, and, and things like that. And on the technician side, should you have gotten rejected, there's an endorsement review process. If you need help with that, we are available. Um, if you want help with reviewing your application itself, we are available as well. Um, Emigrate is a part of a bigger um, company, which is called Bincom Dev Center. And in Bincom Dev Center, one of the services we have is something called the Bincom Global Tech Program. With the Bincom Global Tech Program, what it does is it, it stands on three key pillars. One of them is learn skills, gain experience, and gain exposure. We find out that those the combination of those three are important for these things that we are talking about. And the point is, um, if you are interested in, in, in a service that is able to help you do all of that, so if you have all the skills that you need, do you have the right experience? If you have all the right experience, do you have the right exposure? If you need any or all of those things, then you may want to consider a program like the Bincom Global Tech Program. It's a one to two year journey, but what that one to two year journey does is including the emigrate premium I mentioned earlier, it's actually incorporated into this program. 
um, it costs 1.2 million naira, but it, got, it gets sweeter because the company is able to actually invest in you in something called the income sharing agreement. And with that, what it says is that you can learn tech now and then you can pay later, meaning that you can start paying when you get a high paying job in the field of technology, whether it's in it, it's in your, con your host country, whether it's in a different country, whether it's that you're working remotely or whichever way it is. Also, we have something called the Bincom Mentoring Platform. One of the ways you will find out that you can use to show yourself as globally attractive is mentoring. And with Technation, for example, it has to be a formal mentoring platform. So you can't say, oh, I, I mentored somebody or a colleague of mine at work and things like that. That doesn't work as mentoring. Uh, well, we will not qualify as mentoring in that context. And so if you're looking for something like a mentoring platform, which is a formal platform where you can actually volunteer to mentor a few people who are looking for mentorship at, at whatever level uh, that you are, you can register at that as well. And the URL for that is on the screen. For us at Emigrate, um, if you're in tech, and when I say tech, I mean technology, not just the technical side of tech, right? So meaning that if you're in the business side of tech or even in the investment side of tech, there's there are several pathways for you around relocation, typically out of Africa, um, out of Nigeria, out of Ghana, out of uh, Senegal, and so on, to other parts um, of, of the world, either um, in North America or Europe, Canada, US, UK, and, and so on. And what we do is that we help people to attain global mobility, and we help people to become globally attractive. Um, how it started for us really is that we were trying to solve a problem that existed internally for us. We, we run a couple of tech companies and so on. And when we tell some of our colleagues to say, oh, did you know if you plan and, and so on, you can qualify for this visa or that visa or this opportunity and so on. Many people do not believe that it is possible. And then even those that believe it's possible do not prepare for it, do not do the right action, do not take the right action for them to be able to get to that goal that they've set for themselves. And that's why Emigrate was started, to offer information, to offer coaching, to offer handholding, strategy, consultation, advisory, and also very important, a community around you, a community of like-minded people around you who also have targets along that line as well. Something I must say is that nobody can guarantee you a visa. We are not doing that here. We are not immigration, we are not um, immigration lawyers. Uh, what we are doing in this session is we are just sharing with you from our experience. We are sharing with you from information that we have that you may not know about. We are sharing with you things that you may not know. And we believe that a lot of those things will be important for you in the long run around your own specific goals, particularly around your career, around your family, around the business and whatever else that you're doing. I've spent a bit of time, and so I'm going to be yielding the floor now to, oh yeah, I need to talk about this. Um, around, um, in terms of the different visas available, um, Emigrate is focused on four key countries at the moment. We are focused on the UK, we are focused on US, Canada, and France. In Canada, for example, there's a startup visa. In France, there's a French tech visa. And there are several other visas available. In the UK, there's the global talent visa, which, I mean, we shorten and say just the tech nation visa, but really is the global talent visa in the field of digital technology. The only endorser is a company called Tech Nation. And uh, so we, well, we can just say the Tech Nation visa. There are several other routes as well that you can take depending on your unique circumstance, depending on what you've done, depending on what you have at the moment and depending on what it is that you're looking at. But if you want to, you may probably want to take a screenshot of this page because a lot of this is in the public domain. The question is, are you aware of the requirements? Are you sure, oh, you are targeting the right one based on some of the things that you have done particularly. And also, depending on what years of experience that you have, will determine what visa should you be targeting, if it's a visa you are looking at. But like we said to you, one of the things we want you to take away from this open day is really that these countries are not doing you a favor. What they are saying is that, oh, because we see that you are going to add value to our society, bring that value that you have to our society. And um, I'm sure that Peace will be talking to us a bit more around our journey. Uh, she'll be talking to us about some of the things that, that she, she's done, um, how she applied, how she found out about it, and, and so on as well. So that being said, uh, Peace, thank you so, so much for honoring us.
uh, thank you for joining us for this um, for this session. Um, I would uh, yield the floor to you. Peace will be speaking for about 20 minutes or there about. I'm not sure if she's sharing slides or not. I don't think she would be. But if you have questions, I ask that please send them in the chat. We would likely not have the opportunity to ask you to unmute yourself to ask questions. And so if you have questions, send it in the chat. I will take, we will try as much as possible to take as many questions as possible. We also have questions from registration um, that people did. We also have questions that came from Emigrate SACU. We also have questions that came from, uh, from the Emigrate community as well. And so we would be taking as many as we can. But if you have specific questions, please pop it in the chat. I will try as much as possible to get um, to it. Peace, thank you so much. You're welcome to Emigrate community. Hi, buddy. Thank you very much. Can you guys hear me very well? Yeah, loud and clear, we can. Okay, awesome. When you were doing your introduction, I was like, are you sure that this session is not over? <laughs> you've kind of like covered everything that needs to be covered during your introduction. Uh, anyway, thanks for having me. Um, okay, so what my story is, it's very probably not like some of them that you guys have heard. Um, it's a, a story of maybe a little bit of luck and grace. Um, so I moved to the UK about three months ago, about 10 weeks ago, if I'm going to be very precise. And I moved with the Global Talent Visa, um, exceptional promise. Um, so that's a five-year visa. Um, um, I applied in, I, applied, I moved basically within a month. I heard about Global Talent Visa for the first time, I think sometime last year, um, around October. Um, yeah, on October, it was my birthday, and my friend sent me a birthday message, and he was like, peace, when are you going to jack and leave the country? I'm like, bros, all of us, they find will. So if you see any opportunity, let me know. And he was like, oh, yeah, that I've heard about this visa and that visa. And I remember that somebody had mentioned it before, but I never really paid attention. So I was like, oh, sure. Um, so he, he sent me details, um, told me what the requirements were, and it seemed very cumbersome so i just like you know what maybe at some point i would actively start pursuing this and i just moved on um but then fast forward to like march this year i was like okay yes i know that i'm ready to move so i need to start looking for opportunities so that i can plan towards it within the next one to two years um and so i went back to the technician thing and i googled it read up on read so many articles read the requirements and i was like oh this is not as hard as I thought it was. Like the requirements are pretty straightforward. You just need to have experience. Um, and so I think that was one of my first key lessons um, that for me, it wasn't a thing of I needed to prepare that I know that this opportunity exists. So now I need to work on my profile, my opportunities and do mentorship and do stuff. So that 12 months down the line, I will now say, okay, because of this visa I was preparing for, um, I'm not ready for it. Um, I just happened to be ready and then realized that for some of these things, I've been doing them already and I had the skill and the experience. Um, and I think that's like the very key, first key lesson for anybody that wants to move. Um, but they said something during his introduction that countries are not giving you visa because you want to leave your country. They are give, going to give you visa when you think that you're going to come into the economy or the ecosystem and you will be beneficial to that ecosystem. So they're looking for skills, right? They're looking for ideas. If you're going for a startup visa, innovation visa, they're looking for your experience, your ideas, that you have something that you want to build there. If you're going with like a talent visa, they're like, oh, this person has worked in this kind of company before. It's mostly about your skill and your experience. So the very first thing you want to identify if you want to, um, Jakba, if you want to leave Nigeria or anywhere in Africa, is to identify, okay, what skills do I have, right? Or what skills do I want to groom myself in, right? And one of the things I've learned is that in tech, there's so many opportunities. It's You don't have to be a software developer to get a relocation opportunity. You don't have to be a designer to get a relocation opportunity. Uh, you, you can be anything as long as it's sort of like in tech, um, I'm a marketer. I don't code. I don't. I don't think I would ever learn to code in my life. But I was able to move with the global talent visa, right? Because I've done marketing in tech. So the very first thing is just really 
what skills do I want to, what skills, what skill sets do I want to, um, do I, do I really want to develop and build capacity in? And that should be like the first key thing, right? Um, and there are many ways to then, when you identify your skill and you start building a portfolio, building a profile, there are many ways to then relocate. So I know people that have relocated with skill workers visa, right? Most of my friends, as a matter of fact, um, that moved, have moved with the skilled workers visa to the UK, meaning that they get a job and then the employer says, you know what, yes, I'm willing to relocate you to U UK and they cover every expense for moving one month apartment for you to get settled in to like your visa, to their flights and everything. Um, so, um, but that's 18 of, they already have skill, they already have a portfolio. Um, I wouldn't have been able to apply for the global talent visa at the time when I was ready for it, if I didn't already build expertise, what would have happened would have been, oh, now I know the requirements, let me now go and start working towards it. So if you are learning your skills now and building your capacity, it's a perfect time, right? And then another thing is there's no time that's necessarily too early. As long as you've had the skill, whether you've had the skill for six months or you've had the skill for a year or two years, as long as you already have that skill and your building capacity and you have proof of work, there are opportunities for you to explore. So that's the second thing you want to do, right? Explore different things, right? People are moving to Canada with, you know, visa. People are moving to the UK with employer sponsored thing. People are moving to the UK with a startup visa. People are moving to the UK with this. So once you know what you want to do and you have that skill and your building capacity, it's left for you to then decide here hey, what um, route do I want to go to, right? That's probably the biggest question. What route do you want to apply and wait for a job? I want to get a job so I don't have to spend any of my money to move to a country. But I didn't come fast enough and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to leave. So what's another option, right? But for some people, they might not be able to afford the money to say they want to support on themselves because with tech global talent visa, you have to pay NHS. I paid 3,000. 200 pounds you have to pay for your flights you have to do all of those things um so basically right having that skill and experience allows you the flexibility to then compare the different paths um that are available and to compare the different opportunities are available and that's why this kind of open day is like really great because you then get to hear from people who have gone through different paths and you can then say you know what this is the path that i want to go through and this is the path that i want to go through anyway um so the third thing is, um, so when I actually began to apply and I was going through the requirements for global talent visa, the most basic thing is like in its entirety, is simply that you work in a tech, in a product-led startup, right? So not an agency, not consulting, but precisely a product-led startup, which just means that you're working in a place that builds tech product, right? Regardless of the industry, it can be fintech, it could be health, it could be, anything, it could even be a venture capital firm. Um, and you work as maybe an investor analyst or a venture capital analyst or something like that, but it has to be very product inclined or technological inclined, right? That's like, that's the basic thing. So if you're thinking about global talent research to the UK, your thing is, okay, I have a, I have a skill that is applicable in a product like startup. Let me start looking for jobs in a product like startup anyway. And it doesn't have to be a UK startup, it can be a Nigerian startup, right? And um, that's like basic requirement. Um, and then second thing is, I mean, the visa is so flexible in a way that it gives people with a variety of experiences, the opportunity to then present themselves. So for me, I used um, salary, I used mentorship that I've done, I use events that I've spoken at, right? Uh, I know a friend, that use basically just like product innovation stuff, right? Just different kinds of products and how they apply themselves across different jobs. So um, things that would give you an edge is, first of all, you have to skill, any skill at all, as long as you're working in a product led or a technology, a very heavy technology company. Two is that you are, the, the idea is that you have the potential to be a leader, right? And what are the things that show that somebody has a potential always a leader? One, that you have proof of work, right? Not just that you have a skill and you're working, but there's proof of work that you can show. If I'm a designer, I can show my 
um, envision of Figma file and see, I actually designed this product and it's live. You can go to the website or download the app. If I'm a developer, I can send, put a screenshot of my GitHub profile and say, oh, this is the app I downloaded. This is my code base. You can actually see it on Play Store. It has done so, so amount of numbers. If you're a marketer, you can show your ads dashboard. You can show your strategy playbooks that you work on on Google Slides like I did and actually tell them the numbers. How many downloads does this product have? What's the revenue? What's the transaction? What and show proof of those things. So it's skill, but for technicians particularly, there's also that level of you need to show the proof, the evidence of the work that you're doing. So you also want to put yourself in situations or in, in companies where your work actually shows or there's actual evidence, not the one that you say that you work in this company. But if they ask you, okay, what have you done? You're like, uh, well, I spent six months, but there's nothing to show. It's very important that there's, a, there's actual hard evidence. Right, your code base, your design, your marketing dashboards. If you're a customer support person, show them your intercom or whatever it is you use to do intercom. Like and, and maybe get a letter from your employer that says, Oh, this person actually works in this company, and I can actually verify that you've done this and this and this and contributed this to the company. So that's something, right? Working in a technology startup to have had evidence of proof of work. Something else that helps is just work that you do or things that you do outside of work itself, right? Um, and especially if you're young in your career, if you just have like one year experience or two year experience, you might not have the, um, you might not have enough proof of product work, right? So I know people who have like 10 years experience, they're applying for global talent visa and they don't, they don't use it anything like mentorship or speaking or on your or words. They're just simply using product work across different companies, right? But if you're just in one year, two years, how many places have you worked at? How many products have you probably built? And that's where things done outside of work comes into play, right? You've um, mentored people, but like but they said, it has to be in a structured place, right? In a, in a, it has to be a structured place program so you can see you have five minutes okay where's the structure is there a company name is there a whatsapp group is there an instagram that we can see are there pictures of event the are the email thread like there has to be some sort of structure to be that mentorship program right so that's where volunteering comes in so i have probably done a thousand and one mentorship and trainings across my career in the last five years. So when I saw it, I'm like, ah, this one is easy. Is it Google or Pick Is it Facebook mentorship? Is it sisters mentorship? That was easy, right? Because I volunteered here and there. All I needed to do was to pick the one that best fitted, right? So there's mentorship. Um, then there's also just speaking on high profile events. So people, if you are really good at speaking and people ask you, hey, um, can you come and speak here? Say yes to those opportunities. At some point, you get to the place where you start saying no, you start charging for people. But again, if you're ending your career, that's an opportunity to just build capacity and build things. And when I was doing those things, I didn't know that, or oh, one day I'll apply for technician visa and I'll be like, oh my God. I literally told a friend when I was applying that this is so crazy. But I feel like every single thing I've done in the last four years, just like almost unconsciously, just like opportunity comes and take it. Please come and speak here, do this, come and do this, and do this here. I'm like, I look at my technician visa um, application and it's literally like a summary of everything I've done from speaking. I did something with said God, I added it there. I've done mentorship with sisters, I added it there, I've done product. I was like, oh my God. So when I was doing all of these things over the last couple of years, this was probably like where God was leading me toward, right? So it's like just, Take all of those things. I'm not in a place where I can say no. I can say, oh, someone can say, come and do something. And I'll be like, give me three months. I'm not ready. Um, I had a podcast session yesterday. A friend was doing a podcast. And he was like, you know, I should come and like be his guest on one thing. He sent me that email like three months ago. At that time, I told him, I was like, to be honest, I want to do this, but I don't have the bandwidth right now. Let's do this in August. Right. And that was like in early June or in um, April. I can't remember. But now I'm and that's and I'm able to tell people no or like give me some time because I've done this and I've built the capacity. And it's proof of work already. Right. But if you're very early on in your career, one year, two years, three years, grab onto opportunities because those are the things that you didn't put together to apply for visas. Those are the things that you didn't put together to be able to charge more. Those are the things that you then put together to be able to even command a higher salary, right? Um, and then something else I use in my application. So I've talked about um, 
just working in a technology company. I've talked about making sure that you actually have had evidence. Um, I've talked about doing stuff outside of work. So if it's speaking at events, if it's organizing your own event, um, one of my friends, Antonia, I think she has been here before. She said one of the things she also used was like, she used to organize like Figma meetups or design meetups, right? When, and she used that in her application. So you can also organize your own meetups. Right, and say I'm doing this for the community. It just needs to show that you're doing something outside of what you are being paid for. Right, that's um, something. Else. Another thing is um, just showing leadership and being able to command a higher salary. Now, and this is just where negotiation comes into play. Right, um, depending on where you are in your career, um, salary or equity or remuneration might not be something that you can use for your application. But it's something that you can walk towards, right? And say, hey, in three years, when I want to apply for this visa or switch to a maybe exceptional talents visa, I want to use salary. I want to use remuneration. And that just means choosing very carefully kind of coming to work for one, two, also not being afraid to charge your word, right? Right, not being afraid to charge your word. And three, if you can and you have the opportunities for work for maybe remote companies. Um, so if I say, P kind of comments you pick for it was very easy for me to use salary because I I, I can't remember last time I worked I worked for a Nigerian company when I was still in Nigeria anyway. So I was just like if I just if you guys just convert this thing to Nara and you compare with Nara standard in Nigeria, I'm like love and light to one percent. Uh, and if you even convert it to GPB, like to pound sterling, it kind of just meets the average salary here. So that was easy for me to use. But you also want to be able to like deliberately say i want to seek this kind of opportunities and when the come don't be afraid to negotiate i've in the last two or three jobs i've taken actually like three i haven't taken any salary that you just say oh peace once offer you this and i'll be like okay thank you i'm like nah can you guys do more because they all there's almost always a more that they can give even if they want to they're almost always a more and even if they can't give it you have nothing to lose for actually saying for actually negotiating you know, so especially when you know that you're good at what you're doing. So definitely like go ahead, um, negotiate for salary, negotiate for other things that are not just um, money, right? I know a friend that just got her uh, like, got her endorsement letter and some of the things she used on that remuneration was like the benefits that she got from her company, give her a company car, she has stock options. Those are things that you put together to see my company values my input, right? Those are pecs that you want to say, okay, when I'm negotiating, if I can't negotiate for actually hard end cash, I did other picks that I can negotiate for so that when I say, oh, my company values me, I can say, oh, they're not just pay me this, but they give me one day of every week. So I work for Disney week or, or they give me a car or I have stock options that shows this ownership. There has to be like different things that you look up for. And this is even outside of just a visa. This is just you growing in your career. And as you grow in your career, you want to be able to command certain things and be able to say, hey, I'm, I'm at the place where I'm more comfortable now. So I should be able to demand for, um, certain things um so yeah that's those are some of the things that i think technician requires you to do um the salary expectation there there's high profile events there's awards there is uh mentorship um opportunities or mentorship activities that you've done events that you have, you have organized to just grow your community and of course had improve of product work there's also something on academic i haven't seen anybody that has done anything academic yet but if you write academic papers or research papers for instance and they've been published and maybe endorsed by a professor um then that's also something that you can add to your application um i i think that the, the process is very easy and very straightforward um in one month in in two in three months you can literally leave the country i I, I, I started and left within like six weeks. I was just like, I'm ready. I applied. I got it. I'm like, love and light. I'm done. I just left. Um, one of my friends that started applying in the minute I got to the UK is moving into the moving to the UK in like two weeks. He has got done his application. He has gotten his manager. He has gotten his visa. It's actually very easy if you're doing technician visa, uh, and it's also really flexible. You can start your own company. You can work remotely for a company in or outside of the country. You can work for companies here. You can be a freelancer. You can consult. Um, it, it's very easy. The, and, and it's, I was going to say it's not that expensive, but really expensive is a matter of how much you have in your pocket. So I would just say that there's a little price and I'll explain. I, I can't remember the figures very accurately now, but thank God that Buddy is here so he can help me. I think to apply for the, uh, for the endorsement itself, is like, is it 500 pounds? Um, less than 600 pounds. 
yeah, sorry, yeah, 400 and 456 pounds, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I think it's 456 pounds to apply for the endorsement. So you do your application and get endorsement from um technician. And then when technician endorses you, then you have to do TB test if you're in Nigeria. TB is like 56,000 naira. Then you have to pay for NHS, which is um healthcare, public healthcare. And um, NHS is 600. 650 pounds per year so if you're going so for technician there are two kinds of visas you could get or two categories there's exceptional promise and exceptional talent exceptional promise are for people who have between zero to five years of experience it means that you are still still relatively new to intermediate in your career right zero to five years um whether it's a start whether you're a startup founder you're an employee you, as long as your experience is within zero to five years not just experience but your tech experience so i know someone recently that applied for talent and she has over 12 years of experience but only the last four years has been focused in a product-led company so they gave her promise because of that right so your the experience that you're counting is experience of working in a in tech basically um so zero to five years exceptional promise five years plus exceptional talent uh but whichever one you apply for technician says that they reserve the rights to give you any one so my friend applied for talent they give her promise somebody can apply for apply for promise and they'll give them talent it's just based on how they perceive you and everything now what is the key difference right the only difference is this that with a with exceptional talent, the maximum length you will get a one visa is three years. And after that first three years, you can apply for indefinite settlement, which is like permanent residency, right? But then with exceptional promise, the maximum length is five years, and you have to do that five years before you can apply for re permanent residency. So it just means that if, so my friend who is a talent now, in three years, she can become a permanent resident. I have to wait for five years. That's the only difference. Um, but every other thing is the same. I mean, I was okay with the five years because five years is a long time for me to just be chilling in this country. I'm not going to hurry. The visa, uh, um, the visa says that you can stay here um, for as long as that you can also renew as much as possible. Um, you can get the indefinite settlement after your first visa maximum length and then you can apply for citizenship afterwards. Now, the NHS I was talking about, um, it's 650 pounds, I think so, for every year. So if um, I'm an exceptional promise, I have five years maximum, but I could decide that I want to come to the UK for only two years and apply for only two years visa. It means that you would then pay only 650 times two, which is 1,300 pounds. But then for people like me who are like, nah, we're gonna do this for the whole five years, you then have to pay like the whole 650 times five for healthcare surcharge. Now that's that's the most expensive thing you pay for, just that healthcare, um, which is 650 per year. But if you don't have all the money, you can say, hey, let me just apply for, pay for one year, apply for a one year visa. After that one year, I can save up and then I can renew my visa again, and then maybe pay for my NHS for a longer period at that time, just at least come and bit or you book air first. Um, then after that, your visa fee. Visa is like 150 pounds, I think. Yeah, 150 pounds. Um, in total, in total, if you have six thousand dollars or around four thousand pounds, or for yeah, around four thousand five hundred pounds, six thousand dollars, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, you it covers everything. Five years NHS if you have yeah, you promise and all the visas. Six thousand dollars is like three million naira right now which is actually quite cheaper than even um canada if i'm correct because i know that for canada people have to start um having like four million five million six million naira in their account before they can even like apply but this is a lot cheaper um, but then if you don't have the money one of the things one of the routes you can look for is the skill workers visa which just means get your skill build some experience and apply for jobs in the uk it's that simple um, I, I know like at least six people that have moved to the UK with a skilled workers visa and they didn't pay anything. And I'm jealous every time I think about it. Because when I was bringing out $6,000, these people were just like, my company has paid for my flight. The company has paid for this. My company has paid for that. It's all cool. Um, so yeah, that's something you can do. And then you can always switch from a skilled workers visa to a technician visa 
um, after you save up money or after, if, if, after a year or two or when you want to leave that job and you don't want to be dependent on visa. The good thing with technician visa is that it's not tied to any job, right? It's, it's probably the most flexible visa in for correct because you can do anything, you can start a business, do any job. You don't have to inform the home office that you're changing jobs. But if a company sponsors you, when a company, when you leave the company, you have to inform the home office that, oh, you're moving your visa to another company. But it's a route, right? You can go with that, get sponsored. And when you save up your own money, you can then apply and then switch to a technician visa later on. And, you know, uh, when, you, when you have like no money to do that. So, uh, yeah, I think I've covered most of it. I will just answer questions now. Thank you so much, uh, Peace. Yes, you have covered um, a lot, um, a lot. I mean, and um, I see a lot of questions already on uh, in the chat. Uh, but I'll just ask, um, I'll just cover a few questions and uh, before we then go to the questions on the chat. And I'll just say that if you have questions, uh, please pop it in the chat as well. So we'll be able to get to it as quickly as possible. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much, Peace, for, I mean, you did a fantastic summary of um, all of the uh, your journey so far. Uh, but I wanted to just ask, how easy was it for you to get recommenders? So, I mean, we know you probably you need to have like three recommenders uh, right for you. How easy was that process for you? Was it difficult figuring out what to approach for recommendation letter? Was it easy um, and, and all? Um, it, was, it was super easy. Um, recommendation letter is a thing of relationship, right? Just know the people that you are um, asking to recommend you and let them at least know you. So um, there's only one, I asked, I mean, I had a lot of letters. I had, so that for technician, you need three recommendation letters. So I had that three recommendation letters, but I also had an extra three supporting letters to support my evidences. So that's like six different people that said, peace, we wanted to jack up. Um, and of all that six people, it was only one person that said no. And the reason why he said no was because, um, that he said that one of his, one of his investors is in technician community um, and they might just ask questions that he might not be able to answer because I haven't worked in their company. I've just like consulted and he's a friend. So I'm like, oh, that makes sense. But then he was like, once you get it, just let me know. I've introduced to people in the UK. So that was not open air. I don't want to help you out. He just wasn't sure because they were also in the middle of raising money. Um, but then everybody else like, sure, cool. It was very easy. So it's mostly just a relationship. I also asked people that I know um, I used I'm a company I worked for before, companies I've worked for before. Um, I used said Godin because I mean he's a friend now. So I just texted him and said, You remember the video we did? It went via, I'm applying for this. Do you want to support me? He's like, Yeah, sure. That was easy. So yeah, recognition letter was super easy for me. It's just think about people that fit the criteria and you have a relationship with, as long as they know your work. Right. Um, that's always easy. Yeah. Uh, interesting. And in terms of documents um, submitted, um, I know you already gave a bit of an overview, uh, but what criteria did you target specifically? And then what documents did you submit to? Um, to um, so the for mandatory criteria, yeah, leading I, used, um, I used, <laughs> sorry, give me a minute. Um, high profile speaking events. So I've spoken at really good events. I've spoken at events that Google organized. Um, I've spoken at social media week. I've spoken at a couple of events. So I used evidence speaking at high profile event. Um, I also use high remuneration. So I used two different evidences for that one criteria. For the optional criteria, I did the one that has to do with um, proof of, is it product innovation or something? Innovation, yeah. So I used, yeah, innovation. So I used like product work I've done, marketing dashboards, revenue, um, transaction volume of a fit and company I've worked with. And I got a, I got a supporting letter from the CEO to say, yes, please, I've actually done marketing for us and took us from zero to 100. Then I use mentorship, right? Um, Sisters has a good marketing, a incubator program that runs every three months and a mentor and there's actually a full structure and even like carry involved so i just use all of those documents and got a letter from them to say yes this has good program is a thing we have startups from different um from different places in the major markets peace has mentored a few startups here and there, here and there that, that was it for me yeah fantastic and um 
we, we have three categories, well, three major categories, but we have like subcategories, um, two others. So I'll, I'll talk about all five, but let me start with the first three and then I'll talk about the other two as well. Uh, categories of people in the emigre community generally. We have people who are beginners. Uh, they're just trying to get into tech, zero year, one year experience, still trying to find their feet in tech. Uh, what would you advise them to do? I mean, um, around uh, this visa um, opportunity that you're talking about about? Are there things they can start doing now to be able to qualify in the future? Are there things you would advise them to do? Then we have people who have four, five, six, seven years experience, already doing stuff, already have a bunch of experience and still building more of it. What would you advise them? And then we have people who are 15 years experts in their field, head of IT in a company, head of IT in a bank, and, and things like that. They also are looking at, um, they are also in the immigrant community, and they are also looking at, oh, what are the things I should be doing at this point? What would you advise each one of these category of people, seeing that the UK government has endorsed you as being globally attractive, being a global talent? I would just say, like, and I think I answered the question, regardless of where you are, it's a thing of what's your next step, right? What do you want to do? If you have 11 years of experience and you meet the criteria, then apply already now, except you're not ready to move yet. So you want to like maybe save money or marry first or something. But like if there's nothing holding you down and you're ready to move, then apply. Um, and then for the other two categories, regardless of how many years of experience you have, if you look through the technician criteria and you still feel like, oh, you want to... Um, build like expertise or experience in one area, like you want to do mentorship somewhere before you apply, or you want to speak at an event, or you want to do product-led work, then do that first. It's a it's a thing of, so for global talent, right, after this thing, go to technician.io slash Vista, read up, right? Like it's, it's, it's not overwhelming at all. Like just read up and understand and ask yourself right now, do I meet the criteria? Do I have I worked in a product-led startup or in a venture capital firm before in any whether it's in marketing or in customer support or anything? If yes, that's check one. Two, do I have actual proof of the work, like product innovation work, marketing work, business growth work? If you do, awesome. If you don't, then that's something for you to then go and spend in the next two months or three months or six months or one year to build in. Three, do you need, do you want, would you like to add um what's it called? mentorship to your application do you already have proof of that or don't know okay where can you volunteer and do stuff like that so if you read it you would easily know if you are ready for it now or if you need another six months to just go and add and get some experience somewhere and then just apply the good thing about technician is even if you apply and they don't and they reject you you can appeal and if they reject you again you can do an application all over again so like just do it anyway Thank you for that. And then the two other subcategory would be, uh, we have people who are currently doing masters in the UK and uh, basically there's no route to settlement. So even if you end up getting the two extra years or three extra years, uh, it's still not a route to settlement. And that's worrying for some people, uh, particularly fam people that have family. Uh, and then they are wondering, oh, what are the things I can be doing now so that I can qualify before my student visa expires um i don't know if you have um, specific advice for them we have quite um i i would say two things start applying for jobs and internships or start applying for internships so you have some experience to apply for jobs almost immediately um but one of the fastest ways to stay in the uk if you're doing a master's is get a job real quick otherwise then again apply for a visa like this uh, with technician visa if you're a student then and you don't have actual work experience internship experience will count um, your own personal portfolio experience will count i know people that have built products eh, or design product that is not live per se but they have something to show right or people that have just done like a demo and mvp and say here i want to do this and it, use that to get a startup visa and they figure it out from there so you want to like get something going if you're not applying for your job then you're thinking about an idea that you can build a company with and use that to apply for a startup visa if that one if you don't think you can do that then as the internship opportunities you can do while doing your msc or your masters so that you can use those job experiences as part of your technician visa and say hey i worked as an intern in this company but I contributed X, Y, Z. And while I was also doing my master's, I had a community of 20 students and we had events on this, this and that. That's something you can use for your technician design. 
yeah and also make sure that that i would just add to what peace was saying make sure that that company is a product-led company um technician frowns at consulting outsourcing companies and things like that so try and make sure as much as is in your control that it should be around product leg one more category piece will be people um wondering oh should i apply should i not apply do i qualify do i not qualify i think i have the right things but they are asking for exceptional talent does that mean you need to have won a nobel prize or anything like that what would you say to those people come on just read the read the stuff it's not that hard Right. It's, it's really as simple as I said it. Have experience, have proof of the work. You don't need to have won an award or to feel like you are the best person. Just like, yeah, I, I, I know a friend who probably would never apply for this visa. And when I got mine, I was telling my boss, I was like, ah, please know that you've spoken here, you've spoken there. I was like, nah, I don't think those are those things. Like, you've, you're a developer. I, I know where you've worked. You have products to show. Do it anyway. And he did that. He got it. And he's like, damn, like, if you didn't tell me, I would never have even thought that I qualified because he has never done any public speaking or public work. He just stays in his comp- on top of his computer and just codes, right? So it's just really work in a company and have stuff. You just have proof of it. My friend works in strategy. She's not a marketer. She's not a developer. She's not a designer. She's about to move now. She has even booked flights. She's going to be here in two weeks, right? She doesn't speak anywhere. Right, she just does one consulting here, small mentorship somewhere, just one place safe that she managed to say, Let me do it for them. But most of her work is she has done strategy for companies and they move from zero to point one, and that's it. Fantastic. I have a question in the chat around cost, and I think you've added you've handled that very, very well. But the person also says, Must I have a job offer to get the technician visa? No, you don't. You don't. You can come here and hustle it out and find a job. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my friends who is moving, the guy, the developer, he's working for a company in the US and he's moving here. Um, he's going to be working as a remote person and, you know, set up his own company to be able to handle that. So he, he, he doesn't necessarily need to look for a UK job until he's ready to work for look for a UK job because, again, there's flexibility with the visa. My friend that works in strategy is moving here. He's now, she's looking for a job. She's like, oh, she's moving on. And then she's already, as she started applying for her technician visa, she started looking for jobs. But she's telling them that Dory, I have my visa, you don't need to sponsor me. So it's easy as a resident. So you don't need to, but you need to have a plan to get a job so you can pay your rent and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's not a requirement to get the visa itself. To get the visa. Yeah. Th- thank you for that. Uh, somebody says, um, I-, I think he's talking about some of the criteria that can boost this profile. Uh, what about building a community by organizing a tech tutorial session on YouTube? Will it also help you boost your profile? As long as it has numbers, as long as it has numbers. So things that have to do with like online presence, uh, a YouTube video um, stuff, on um, numbers would matter. Um, but, for the, but if you're doing that same tech tutorial and it's physical, it can be only 10 people just have proof of pictures. But if it's online, they kind of like expect that there'll be numbers because we, we, we online, there's no restriction, right? If you promote it well, you should be able to actually get like a good number of people. Yeah, thank you. Um, someone is asking, is Technation a member-based organization? No. So Technation is a company and they are the only endorsing body for a type of global or a type of visa in the UK called the Global Talent Visa for the field of digital technology. There is Global Talent Visa for the field of fashion. There's global talent visa for the field of engineering, and there are different endorsing bodies for each one of those visa visa type. But then for the field of digital technology, the company that is the only endorser as at this moment is Technician, and that's why you air Technician visa as the name for it. And please do a bit more research around it so you can find out. Um, I think we're taking this funny enough. I'm currently a, a, a student in the UK, and what are my chances? What can I do doing MSc? I think we've covered it to a large extent. So I'll move on to the next one. Can a beneficiary of technician visa move with his or her family? Um, the I'll just take that. The answer is yes. Uh, the visa would you can move with your family on the technician visa, and so you can apply together with them, or you can choose to first get your own visa and then apply for everybody together. There are two stages to it. The first stage is you need to get an endorsement from that company I mentioned 
technician, then the second stage would then be you applying at the home office. So what most people in our community, we have a couple of success stories in the community already. And what most people would do is basically get your endorsement, then you can apply with your family. The only problem is that with your family, your um, NHS such ad will be higher because for each person that you are bringing to the UK, you are going to be paying 650 times maybe three or times five, depending on how many years, times the number of people. So it depends on if you are able to do that immediately or you want to move first, earn some money, and then you can get your family to come later. For your dependents as well, they have a pathway for uh, citizenship and ILR, which is the indefinite leave to remain. Uh, their pathway is five years, regardless of if you are talent, where you can get ILR in three years, or if you are promised, then you can get it in uh, five years. Um, must the recommend piece, I think I'll give this uh, to you on the recommenders must be from the UK. Should the recommenders must they be from the UK or international? No, no, they can, they can all be, in, they can be anywhere. They can be anywhere. Um, my recommenders, I had two from Nigeria and, um, let me be sure. Actually all three were Nigerian companies. Yeah. But then my supporting letters I had from like different ones, but like your key recommendation letters, and that's all you need. You don't, you don't necessarily need supporting letters, except you want, you want to, they can be anywhere as long as they are C-level executives of a product led company. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody is asking, can experience gained in Nigeria before coming to the UK work? So I, I think this must be the person in the UK. Already. Yes. 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 Everybody that I've helped, um, in the last, I, I have I have five people that have literally helped in, in the last in ten weeks since I moved here that I'm moving now. So I'm building my own community of <laughs> immigrants. Um, none of them have worked for companies outside of Nigeria, so you don't. Oh, sorry, that's wrong. Four of them have not. One has. So you can use just focus on what you're doing now in Nigeria or any country that you are, and you can still get it. Um, uh, someone is asking, what's the nature of your digital marketing job before you applied? So digital think... marketing, no. <laughs> <laughs> digital marketing job, that's it. As long so as it's were you not agency. Were you I was not co-founder. I was just like digital marketer, head of marketing. Yeah, like so. Oh, okay, yeah. but for tech-enabled startups, obviously. Oh, exactly, exactly. All right, then. The key is, it doesn't matter what the role is. Literally, as long as the work is done in a product-led company. Mm. Mm. Um, someone saying, fresh graduate, I find to work in the UK. I'll just watch the video recording. Peace has said a lot of things already because we are running out of time. So I'll just skip to, uh, how long should I have known my recommenders? Peace. Um, I don't think that there is a specified amount of time anywhere. I haven't seen that requirement anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but it's safe to keep it like at least a year. So yeah. you don't want to meet somebody now. And the key why it's important for like a year so that when they write it, they can actually say how they know you because that's important. And that's something I use in my applications anyway. So for the person to say, okay, um, I knew Peace by day she worked in my company or I have seen her speak at this event, I followed her, blah, 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 for this long. So, I mean, that means that they have to know you and somebody that you just met might not be a good criteria to actually add substance to that letter. But there's no specific length yeah, that I've seen anyway. Yeah. Um, so somebody is asking this and I'm going to add this to a different question I want I would like you to also maybe drill down a bit on. So there are people that are aspiring to be in the field of digital marketing, right? And they're wondering, oh, what is like the pathway? What are some of the things I will need to do? And someone else is asking, yeah, what is what do you mean by digital marketing dashboard? <laughs> Um, right. So I don't know if you could just break it down to those people to say, oh, today you decide zero years experience in digital marketing. What are some of the things they will encounter between zero years to five years experience that you could um, talk about? OK, so I have a video that I made on how to launch a digital marketing career, and I'll just use the video to answer the question. Fantastic. Uh, everything that you need to know about launching a digital marketing career is probably actually there. So mm -hmm. just find the video and watch other videos. Um, this, this, what do I mean at digital marketing dashboards? If you do digital marketing and you run ads, for instance, you will have an ads manager dashboard. Uh, if you do something where you have uh, marketing analytics to actually show the impact of your work or SEO dashboard, that's something that you can show. So a dashboard is basically anything that shows your data on your working, 
right? So any part of marketing, whether it's SEO or is um, ads, right? Those are things that you can easily show. Thank you for that. And I, I guess we should just also emphasize that you can't show that, oh, I only spent 20,000 Naira on ads and I'm a digital marketing professional at that at that level. No, you need to show, I mean, numbers really. And so I guess that's something uh, we should also mention. Um, is the visa open to network professionals with uh, professional level of Cisco certification haven't, haven't implemented in different stages? Um, I'll, I'll just take this. Um, uh, please go on to that website and take a look at some of the professions that they are looking for, right? I think that you may want to start tilting your career towards something called DevOps, right? Where uh, many companies now, uh, we are looking at things like cloud infrastructure and, and things like that. And so you can tailor your career, you already know networking. And so you can literally tailor your career into infrastructure and DevOps. That would probably be easier for you to qualify with if you already have the experience. So I'm saying AWS, cloud hosting, cloud management, things like that. Uh, but if you go on the technician side, we won't have time to share that. But on that side, they list out all the different, um, not all, different categories that would qualify, some on the business side of things and some on the technical side of things. Um, somebody says, can my recommender be a senior manager in a bank or senior engineer in a tech company? Um, it has to be a C-level executive. So like a CTO, a COO, a CMO, a CEO, but C-level, because that's what they say. Yes, and as much as possible, try and make sure that they are in the field of technology. So a senior manager in a bank, um, if you're saying maybe IT, head of IT or something like that in the bank, that would make sense. But don't say that, oh, it's your head of audits that you want to write for you, because what they are saying is that these people who are themselves exceptional talent in the field are pointing to you to say you are exceptional talent or your exceptional promise. And so they are believing them. That's pretty much what that process um, entails. Um, in a tech, not necessarily C-level, as senior as possible. So in, I've seen many recommenders that are not um, C-level, but usually they would be, I mean, maybe head of IT, for example. So maybe not in the board, but something, someone like that, as long as the person is able to show themselves as a talent themselves. Because don't forget, your recommenders will provide their LinkedIn, they will provide their profile. They will look at these recommenders to say, are these people themselves exceptional in the field of um, technology? Um, yeah, uh, peace. If you don't mind, we'll just take an extra five minutes or so of your time because um, I, I see we are already past the hour already. And um, this has been very, very interesting um, so far. We are coming to the end of, of today's session. I will just say a few quick things around emigrate, um, um, around the emigrate community again that I mentioned at the beginning of this. And then we would yield the floor for peace for our final uh, words uh, to the community today. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, with Emigrate, there are quite a number of things that we do for free. And um, of course, we do have some premium things as well. Uh, one of the things I would just say is, and I'm putting that on the screen as, as we speak right now, there's a lot of information out there. One of the challenges I see with a lot of us, a lot of people, particularly around Africa, particularly Nigeria, but we are getting people in Ghana and so on talking to us as well, is that many people don't read. One of the things that you can do is do yourself a favor, simply go and Google Tech Nation visas and then read that entire page. It's a very long read, but by the time you finish reading that, you would already get an idea of, oh, this is what these people are asking for. Yes, it can get a bit confusing, which is why you may need some help, uh, which is why we do have uh, different services and so on and, uh, as well. But start with the things that you can get for free. If you Google it, there are a lot of videos out there. There's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of people sharing their experience of what they've done here and there. But many of us do not even try at all. 
The second problem is that now that you know this, now that you have this information, are you going to take action? Are you going to start planning? Are you going to start doing the things that you need to do that will point to you being exceptional talent? Are you going to figure out places where you can speak? Are you going to appear in newspaper? Are you going to host events? Are you going to do all of those things that will point to you? Or are you going to wait to two years time and then look back and realize that, oh, I've actually not done anything that would, actually, would count? Peace says something I would like to point out as well, which is this, that some of those things that she was doing wasn't because of a visa that she was doing it. She was just doing it because that was part of what she does, gener generally speaking. But those things then ended up being what the requirements are, are for the visa. But then, get this, those things are also what the requirements are for our next level, for our next job, for some of the things that she's doing now and she's trying to do now. Key point is this, build your profile, and your profile, if it becomes globally attractive, will sell you. Um, Peace, I don't know if you want to share your final words before we- I think on. that you said it all. So <laughs> I would just say like, go forth and succeed guys. I wish you, I wish everybody here luck. Um, it's never, it's not as hard as it seems. You just have to be willing to try. So yeah, good luck. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. And uh, for those um, asking, how can I join the WhatsApp group? You simply need to go to bincom.net slash emigrate. Um, if you indicate interest on that channel, I think you will get a mail for you to get a link to the WhatsApp group. Or if you go to the Emigrate Pison page, the link is also there for the Emigrate community. If you meant the, um, the premium community, that is actually on Slack, not on WhatsApp. And that is a paid community uh, for, for that, for people in that in, in there. Um, yes, yeah. so thank you very much, um, everyone, for joining us for today's session. We would ask a favor to say, please tell people around you about um, Emigrate. Tell people around you about some of these visas. Let's try and get this information out there to say these opportunities are available to us. These opportunities are available. And the question is that are you going to plan towards it? Are you going to take action? towards it. Also, we do have other um, services, one of them being the Bincom Global Tech uh, Program. Um, it's one to two years. And what, um, and what that program does is it helps you to build skills, gain experience, and gain exposure in the field of technology. It's a one to two year journey. It is very intense. It's 40 hours, but a lot of the things that you need to build for you to qualify for things like this visa are some of the things that the program forces you to do as part of you building your experience. And one more thing that is interesting about this program is that it actually incorporates the Emigrate Premium that I spoke about earlier, which is one of our premium services as well. And for some of us that are ready to apply immediately, some of us that are looking at, oh, um, I need help, uh, we do have services that covers that as well. So the key points I'm saying is do take action, uh, share this with friends, share this with other people that around you that may not know. A piece mentioned that was someone that just shared with her that this opportunity exists and um, in October last year and within almost a year or less than a year, she was able to do everything she needed to do for her to be able to move. You can also help someone else in that, in that regard as well. And for you that you already know, take action, do your research and ensure that you take the next step that you need to take. Thank you everyone and have a good night.